one of the largest, Jakobshavn is now pumping out over 40 billion tons of icebergs each year, more than any other glacier in the Northern Hemisphere. These icebergs reach the open ocean at Disco Bay. This deceptively peaceful ice scape, James Baylog is on the hunt for giant icebergs. Some of these blocks of ice rise 100 meters above the waterline, but 90% of their mass is hidden below. Oh my god, these things are gigantic. If they roll over, we'll be swimming with the fishes. But right in here, there's this line of jewels as, they, as you come around the arc of this berg and all the water drops are coming in and uh, the sun makes this fantastic necklace of jewelry along the edge of this. Oh man, I can't, there, let's do it again. I, there's, something, there's something in there. It's making me crazy actually. Because the, this there's a picture in here. There's definitely a picture in here. Wow, that was amazing. Fifty-six kilometers up the fjord from Disco Bay, Baylog's time-lapse cameras are stationed above the carving face to capture Jakobshavn's every move. Baylog has teamed up with glaciologist Jason Box, who's been keeping a close watch on Jakobshavn and other glaciers along the coast for the past 14 years. The Jakobshavn Glacier is the king of glaciers in Greenland. It produces by far more icebergs and more ice flow than any other single glacier. This is really where the rubber hits the road in terms of sea level rise. Glaciers are, of course, very dynamic systems, but you don't really see that when you sit there and stare at them. We're able to observe with the time-lapse cameras at a much higher frequency, like every hour, whereas from satellite, you can only observe the glacier every 10 days or so. What they're finding is that the ice is far more sensitive to temperature changes than they thought. During the summer melt season, Jakobshavn is now moving at a rate of 40 meters a day, almost twice as fast as a decade ago. The faster it goes, the more pressure builds up behind the glacier's 120 meter high carving face. This triggers more frequent and explosive carving events. In the spring of 2008, Baylog's team was staking out Jakobshavn and got lucky, capturing the largest carving event ever filmed. In the space of about an hour, a section of ice as wide as Manhattan sheared off the glacier. Greenland is already losing 150 billion tons more ice every year than it gains in snowfall. As temperatures go up in the coming decades, even more ice will be lost. The hard part is figuring out how much and how fast. There's big questions now that we didn't think we were going to have to solve. They're hard questions. Ultimately, you crank up the temperature in the air and the ice sheet notices and it flows faster and it raises sea level. But how fast and how much are questions that really we don't have answers to. Some of these answers may be hidden deep under the ice.
The summer melt season on the Greenland ice sheet has grown hotter and is now two weeks longer than it was only a decade ago. Rivers of meltwater cut deep into the ice, creating a serpentine canyon that winds for kilometers. This is one of the most exceptional landscapes I've ever seen in my life. You know, this looks so much like those incredible canyons out in the sandstone country in Utah. And you have that, except it's sculpted out of ice. It's like this huge, incredible cake sculpted by this river in here. And it's like, the world isn't supposed to look like this. As the summers heat up, features like this ice canyon are becoming more pronounced. But for all its beauty, it raises perplexing questions about the effect this water is having underneath the skin of the ice sheet. The strangest phenomenon is the mystery of the meltwater lakes. As the ice sheet cooks down, the meltwater collects in depressions in the ice, forming thousands of lakes, some several kilometers wide and nearly 15 meters deep. From satellite images, scientists noted that in midsummer, many of these lakes vanished overnight, leaving bright circles where the water once stood. Until recently, it was assumed that the water was absorbed and refrozen into the ice sheet. But Ian Jochen and Sarah Das have a hunch that the water could be having a deeper impact. They placed a device that measures water pressure, called a pressure logger, in the bottom of the lake, hoping it might drain. If they can find the logger, their bet might pay off. The fish line that we're following, it's tied at one end to our stations and it's tied at the other end to an old plastic bottle that has a pressure logger attached to it and that's sitting in the lake basin. And so we're following the line out, hoping that at the end we'll find it tied off to our loggers. The loggers should reveal exactly when and how fast the lake drained. Everywhere, truck-sized blocks of ice litter the lake bed. Evidence of the violent forces uncorked as the water rushed out. I see hey, it! Hey, there Look it is! That. Whoa! In there, under the ice. Watch your fingers. I'm in. There's one of them. With the loggers in hand, they can now plot out the minute-by-minute -minute account of the mass draining of the lake. So what you see here on the left is um, early June when there's no water in the lake. And as more water fills the lake, the pressure goes up. The height of the water column goes up and up, up, continue to fill, 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 till about this point. And then on July 10th, boom, you see the lake drop in a matter of about 40 minutes. GPS data reveals that so much water drained out so quickly that the surrounding ice was pushed up by over a meter. Well, as you can see from the blocks all around us, there's a tremendously violent event. You have a lake that's two miles wide, 40 feet deep, and all of a sudden it drops. 3,000 feet through the ice. It would have basically been one of the tallest waterfalls in the world. Uh, the flow into these cracks in the, in the lake bed is greater than the flow over Niagara Falls. Instead of being absorbed and refrozen into the surface ice, they discover that the water drops all the way to the bedrock. There it lifts and lubricates the ice sheet and accelerates its slide. And if you have increased warming, especially in the summer,